My name is Tara Harrington and I would like to welcome you to another episode of Technically Speaking. Technically Speaking is a monthly program produced by St. Clair County RESA that features the learning opportunities provided to high school students attending the St. Clair County Technical Education Center. We'll show you what is offered and give you the chance to get an in-depth look at the variety of programs of study provided at Tech. We'll also see what students are doing and you'll even have the chance to meet many of the Tech students, the staff, and alumni. In this edition of Technically Speaking, we are looking at the Digital Media Technology Program. This is one of the newer programs offered at Tech. And talk about your hands-on learning opportunities. Students in the Digital Media Technology Program are involved in hands-on activities every day, from running video cameras and audio systems to designing computer graphics and editing videos. America's Career InfoNet is projecting better than a 15% increase in the number of jobs available for DMT students just here in the state of Michigan over the next six years. And the wages are also expected to be good too. And as technology continues to evolve and influence more and more of our daily lives, this career path has a very bright future. There is a lot to see, so when we come back, we'll meet the instructor from Tech's Digital Media Technology Program, Keely Baraboo. Welcome back to Technically Speaking. We're now in the Digital Media Technology classroom and having the opportunity to get to meet the first year teacher for this program, Keely Baru. Keely, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Like all tech teachers, you need to have a good background before you can begin teaching in the career technical education area. So give us a little bit about your background. Well, I'm from the area. I grew up in Lakeport and graduated from Port Huron Northern and went to the University of Michigan and graduated in film and video studies and went on to work uh, an eight and a half year career in television in California after graduating from uh, U of M and worked for networks like E Entertainment Television, the Style Network, uh, had an internship with The Tonight Show. So there was a lot of different variety of programming and styles of production that I was able to uh, work my way through and um, ended up staying out there, got a master's degree from the University of Southern California and worked in public relations for about five years after that. Um, I came back to this area because I heard that this opportunity to instruct at St. Clair Tech was available and I really still had an affinity for the field of television and production and so I, I thought it sounded like a great way to uh, keep myself in both areas so it's great to be back. What a great skill set that you're able to share with the students as they come through the program. Thank you, yes. Now what, what are some of the skills that the students are learning here in your program? Well, you know, there's a lot of skills beyond just the industry items like, you know, video camera operation or audio production or uh, special effects with different software or different editing uh, tools like Final Cut Pro. Um, they also use industry software for graphic design like Photoshop, Illustrator, but also there, I, I feel that it's really important they're learning things like leadership. I really emphasize teamwork. I think that's critical and it doesn't really matter what field you're going to go into. That's a really, really, really important skill to hone and develop and be a, be a pro at. So we, we exercise a lot of those things along with the actual tactical um, field specific things that they're learning in the class. I know you've only this is your first year teaching the program, but do you find a lot of the kids are looking to go into some kind of digital media technology career, or is it more for hobbies and things that they just like to be able to do on their own? I find most of them have a really strong interest in it, and I think that in whatever they do, it's eventually going to carry over. I think some of them full-time are going to be pursuing um, this industry after they graduate, and I think others might do something a little bit related but you know I think most of the people that are coming here really are curious and want to know how do they do that mm -hmm. how do they put that on the screen how do they you know create that type of poster how do they pull off that special effect and so I think that that type of curiosity once you know how to do it becomes really exciting and uh, you want to continue being able to practice it. Now I know that there's a wide variety, you've explained a little bit, wide variety of different skill sets that the students learn. Do they need to master each one of those in the class or after they get introduced then they can kind of specialize? They do have to study each of the skills through a certain level of proficiency and once they've achieved that proficiency then they're tech certified in that category of job. So um, they get something at the end of the year that gives them a little bit more freedom. It's called a capstone project. And they get to decide which medium they want to express their idea and do their production and creativity. And we had everything from um, short films that were documentary style, that were um, uh, mockumentary style, to uh, 
posters made with Illustrator to um, a, a comic book cover for a potential comic book a student wanted to start. And I know one of the unique things the students get to do with your program isn't just in the classroom or just in the studio. They get to go out in the community and do some different videotaping and different things. Share, share a little bit about that. They do, and I think that's one of the most exciting things about this type of class in that we're unique. There isn't really... Um, there isn't really an industry standard certification that you can get that's known nationally or internationally. So it's really important that students are out working and getting absolute resume titles and credits on, you know, that they can present to employers and say, look at, I have all of this professional experience being a field producer, being a camera person, being a production assistant, being an audio technician, um, or whatever the case may be for their particular interest. And we've been working a lot with downtown Port Huron and some with the Blue Water Film Festival to try to create those real life um, freelance almost internship opportunities for the students and the more that they take advantage of them they're gonna leave tech with a resume that is more impressive than I even had the opportunity to leave college with which I think is really exciting. Now do you have the students create some kind of electronic portfolio of their work too while they're in here? The students in the AM have been working in video and they all created DVD reels for themselves before they left so that they get to take with them all of the production work that they've done and likewise in the afternoon class which is focusing on uh, graphic design right now they're also doing the same thing. Eventually I would like to get it so that it is all available digitally online because I think that that's absolutely where employers in this field are going where they want to see that you can operate solely on a digital basis. And your class has had some success at national and local competitions too, haven't they? We have, yes. We had um, some excellent, excellent students uh, go on to the state competition for Skills USA this year. We had students in the categories of photography, audio broadcasting, video production, and um, job skill demonstration, and they all were fantastic kids and really very talented. And two competitors were partners. Christian McGeechy and Jordan Huffman and they won the audio broadcasting competition at the state level and will be representing the entire state of Michigan as the best in the whole state at nationals for Skills USA in Kansas City. Well we're going to take a little break here and go over to the studio and see some of the different job skills that the students are learning in the DMT program so don't go away we'll meet you over in the studio in just a sec. Welcome back to Technically Speaking. In this segment of the program, we usually have the opportunity to talk to a couple of students and let them demonstrate what they're learning in the classroom. But because there's so many different jobs that the students are learning in this program, we thought we'd take you around the studio and let you see what it takes to produce a program like Technically Speaking, Dateline Schools, or some of the other shows that we produce here at St. Clair County Risa. One of the first people that uh, is behind the scenes that we're gonna meet right now is the camera person. And they're the ones who create all the shots that you see in all of these programs. Programs. So let's go see who's behind the camera today. Who's Who do we have today? Hi, my name's Aaron Grebe. I'm a senior at Marine City High School. Aaron, describe a little bit what you're doing behind this camera. Well, uh, as a camera person, it's my job to capture what's going on on set and make sure everyone looks good. And there's a lot of adjustments you have to make as a camera person. You have to do a white balance on your talent using our whiteboard over there to make sure there's not a weird tint, like a yellowish tint to the, um, to the picture. And the headset I'm wearing is to communicate with the director and he tells me what to do like uh, when I need to zoom or move the camera and they tell me when my shot's about to be taken. So that's really how the director gets a little artsy craftsy with having the, each camera person do different types of shots so we're not all seeing the same thing, right? Yeah, it's good to have a lot of variety in your shots because that's what makes it visually interesting okay. to watch. Also notice it looks like you got a pretty big lens. Can you tell us what this is? Well, actually that's not a lens. That's our teleprompter that we use for our studio productions when we're doing a talk show or something like that where you can't memorize a script. Uh, another little trade secret, right? Yep. All right, great. Another position that we have here in the studio is the floor manager. Good morning. Good morning. And you are? My name is Kim Tomlin. I'm a senior at Marine City High School. So tell us what, a, what is the role of the floor manager? Well, that's a floor manager, what you want to do is try to communicate what the director is saying to you, from, to you to the, the talent. And how you do that is by this headset that I'm wearing. And through this, you adjust your um, levels for what you hear the director saying. And what you try to do is, if the talent needs to like wrap it up, and because the production is going too long, you just do like hand gestures like this, and you point to them when you want them to start going and talking. The main job is just to communicate and get the talent ready for the shots 
for the camera people and director. So your job is really kind of like the boss on the set then, isn't it? Yes. Now I notice you know, we have three cameras set up here. Do you get, kind of have to point? Do you walk between the cameras type of thing too? Or you just pretty much stay in one spot? Um, for the most part, I stay in one spot, but where I'm at in the studio really depends on where the talent's looking into what camera, because you really want to go wherever the talent can see you so you can communicate to them. Okay, very good. Another important position in the studio is the audio director, because if we can't hear what everybody's saying, we're going to be missing a big part of the show. So who's our audio director today? Uh, my name is Christian McGeechee, and I go to Marine City High School. And audio is a very big part of the production here in the studio, because you need to have the talent sound good at all times. And we do that by first deciding what kind of microphone to use. Like right now, I have a lavalier, which is a clip-on one. Or you can use what you're using right now, which is a handheld, which you can use for many, you know, just to direct and choose which talent you want to go to. Or you can use a boom or a shotgun mic, um, which is on the camera right now, which picks up everything. Now, for this particular job, you don't end once you get the talent mic'd up. You also have other duties back in the production mm -hmm. studio, too, right? Right. You got to keep, uh, make sure they're, they're sounding good, the audio's good, um, they're not over-modulated, because you got to make the talent sound good. Okay, very good. Also on our set today, we have a couple of young ladies who are filling in as talent as we're getting everything set up in here in the studio. So tell us what you're doing in this role. I'm Cheyenne Niffin, and I go to Marine City High School, and currently I am the talent. And so as you're sitting in, as we're getting ready, tell us why it's important to have someone sitting in the chair before the actual talent gets here. It's always important to be prepared and be here because you need to make sure that you look good, and the people on camera will tell you if you need to fix your hair or to do this with your shirt or whatever. And then it's always important to white balance, and of course there's audio where he needs to check your mic and make sure that you sound good. All right. Also joining us as talent today is? I'm Brittany Turner. I am a senior at Port Huron High School. Okay, Brittany, we've also talked about the, uh, the audio. We also talked about getting the shots right. But I look up above, there's an awful lot of lights up here in the ceiling that you wouldn't normally see. Tell us about the importance of that. Lighting is very important because you can have a lot of shadows that shouldn't be in the shot. They could be out of place, um, and they also get too hot. Well, we've seen a lot of jobs in the studio already, but that isn't where all the jobs end. We need to go down to the production studio and take a look and see who some of the jobs are behind the scenes. So come on with me. Here we are in the production studio, and as you can see, we can overlook the whole studio and see what's going on. But this is really where everything comes together for any kind of video production. So joining me is the director of the program today. Hi, uh, my name is Jordan Hoffman. I'm a senior at St. Clair High School. And Jordan, tell us a little bit, what is the role of the director? Uh, well, the role of the director is really to make sure the shoot goes on as scheduled. Uh, I control our uh, talent, our floor manager, our camera people, our audio, our lighting. Uh, basically, everything comes down to uh, the director's final call. So I really got to be on top of my game to make sure that everything looks right for network standards. Looks like you got a lot of high-tech equipment here uh, that you're able to work with and, and utilize to make this a good broadcast. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, in front of me is our switcher board that um, I switch between all of our cameras, um, our uh, graphics, our uh, C uh, CG. Uh, right here we have our green screen control uh, and our graphics control. That's our lighting. Um, and then there is our t all of our tape decks to record, uh, to throw up our B-roll footage, which is like overlaid video. Uh, now, generally with uh, larger production houses and bigger productions, you'll have more people back here working with you, and then you just call the shots. But today, you get to be the jack of all trades. Uh, yeah, um, with our bigger shoots, uh, sometimes we'll have like eight cameras or something. We'll need just a, ten a technical director to uh, just push buttons, and they basically will listen to the director, uh, which would be me today. Just um, I tell them what to do. They're, I'm the eyes, and they're the hands. Uh, it's really too much just for one person, so it takes two people. And this isn't all the staff that's involved with the video production. There's also the post-production part of it. So let's go back over to the classroom and take a look at what's all involved in the post-production part of the process. 